G'day, Justin Hogg here from Right Source, going through a series of videos on helping you set up your not-for-profit. Last couple of videos we've done, we've talked about the planning process for your not-for-profit and also the registration process with the ACNC. What we're going to go through in this video is really talking in a bit more detail around the governance requirements of your not-for-profit if you're registered with the ACNC and also a bit about the board and, and sort of how that intertwines with governance. So governance is a very interesting topic and it's a bit ethereal. It's hard to understand well, what is governance? Well, governance is basically how we do things here. So the processes and relationships that allow your organization to run effectively and continue to run. So that's in a nutshell what governance is. So it's really just a, a way that you document your processes. The board in a not-for-profit is very important in this governance process because they're really the top of the chain. They're the one who, who set the processes for the organization. So understanding what the board does is also helps understand the governance process from a not-for-profit. So a board in a not-for-profit is really the body that's accountable for the operations of the not-for-profit. So that's, that's their job. They're the ones who make sure that everything is done correctly. So they do a lot of monitoring and making sure that the not-for-profit remains compliant. They help set the strategy for the not-for-profit and the direction. With that strategy, obviously making sure the resourcing is in place to achieve that strategy. So they're very much the high level of making sure the workings are, are happening for that not-for-profit not to continue to achieve the purpose that it's set up to achieve. So in setting up a board, obviously it's made up of people. So you want to make sure that when you construct that board and not-for-profit, that it has the skill sets that you require, the members who are there who are either bringing a skill set or engaged in the purpose, um, hopefully both. Also, the, uh, bringing the, the culture that you want to the organization because the board and the board members are very important in setting up the culture for the organization that you want and that can be have a real impact in achieving your purpose. The other thing to understand with not-for-profits and, and boards is quite often um, these people on boards, the directors, are donating their time. They're quite often, especially in Australia, give their time for free. So you want to make sure that they're, one, that they're giving value to you for the time that they're giving, so you, that, that things are running efficiently, but also that they're, they're doing something they want to do. So you want to make sure that engagement piece is on, on both sides of the fence. Also, being a director in an organization, whether it be a not-for-profit or for-profit, comes with a certain element of risk. So if, you, if the governance processes of an organization aren't followed, and if, as you as a director, don't um, follow the obligations that you have in that position, there is an element that, allow, that opens you up for personal risk. So being aware of the obligations that you have acting as a director is also a very important part of understanding that when you start thinking of the whole structure of your not-for-profit. So you've got a board, well, you've got the concept of a board, and I suppose that's when, when looking to start up a not-for-profit, starting to put those feelers out and understand, well, who's going to be on your board? You might be on the board to start with, or maybe that's your end goal, or maybe not. Starting to understand those members that will make up the board, it does take a bit of time, and you want to start working through that process when you're setting up your not-for-profit. So you've got a concept of, of your board and how you might set that up. You then also then get back to, well, how you, how's that going to run? How's the organization going to run? And that talks back to that governance piece. So how is your not-for-profit or charity, how is that going to be managed and, and what's important in that process? Now, this is where the ACNC requires charities to maintain good governance. And they set out five particular categories of governance or, or aspects of the governance of an organization that they require charities to live up to or maintain. The first one of those is to have a purpose and to be acting as a not-for-profit entity. Now, we've spoken about this in the setup process and this way it keeps coming back. If your board is there, they need to be acting in the best interest of your charity and they need to be acting towards the purpose that the charity is set up for. So that is key and number one in the governance of your organization is it should be set up in a way that achieves or looks to achieve the purpose. The second point in your good governance is accountability to members. So depending on how your organization is set up, there is always going to be members to a degree. And this is really to give an accountability of the board to someone else to make sure that there's a, a, a double check in place that the board is acting in its best interest of the, of the purpose of the charity, but is also then accountable to someone to make sure that 
th those processes are happening and you are continuing to operate towards that purpose. Number three, and this one may seem a bit obvious, but the, the third one is compliance with Australian laws. Now, that's easy, isn't it? Well, it's actually, it is quite challenging because there's a lot of compliance obligations that are out there for Australian laws. So you've got obviously the ACNC, which is who you've registered with to start with. You've got the ATO, you've got Workplace Health and Safety, the Corporations Act, you've got um, different requirements of your industry. So if you're working in healthcare, um, there may be specific requirements you need to ensure that you're maintaining and laws that you're maintaining the compliance to. So making sure you understand all these obligations you have and the board's aware of them and is ensuring that you are actually complying with them is a very important part. Uh, another aspect that fits in with this compliance aspect is also the accountability. So part of the board's responsibility is to make sure that they know who is doing what. So when we talk about making sure you're compliant with all these laws and regulations, you're, the only way to make sure that's achieved from a board perspective is to make sure you're clear on who's accountable for doing these tasks. So a very important aspect of a board is to make sure that there's clear accountability, both at a board level to understand if there's board members or directors, should I say, that are, are doing those tasks, or if it's the executive in terms of the CEO or the management team, who's doing those tasks and that there's a clear method of reporting back to the board to make sure that these obligations are met so the board can have confidence that they're meeting the obligations that they have to the ACNC to continue to operate as a charity. The number four, the number four. So the next one is the suitability of board members. Now this has a number of aspects again. The first one is when you appoint a director to your not-for-profit to make sure that they are eligible to act as a director and they haven't been disqualified as a director. So, you know, making sure there's a check done to make sure that they're still, um, they haven't uh, been penalized in a different role and been banned from being a director, but can also be things like a police check, potentially might also be doing a, a blue card check or other checks that are required just to make sure they meet the, the level of expectation you have on the directors that are working for your organization. The other aspect in terms of making sure you've got directors that are suitable for your organization is also making sure you've got the right skills mix. So the skills matrix can be done or looking at, well, what skills do I need in my not-for-profit to help it run well at the board level? And then making sure that when you go and recruit directors that you're trying to look at the skills that they're bringing to the not-for-profit and that they supplement what's already there and add to what is needed for your not-for-profit to run successfully. And then lastly, which is actually in a lot of respects the biggest area that you need to look at in terms of, of the board and the governance of the board, is the duties of the board members. So being clear on what their duties are. Now this comes a little bit back to accountability, but also back to the actual obligations under the Corporations Act in terms of acting as directors. So this means things like uh, acting in the best interest of the charity, not using your position or information that you receive uh, for your own personal interest, making sure conflicts of interests are disclosed and managed appropriately, making sure you maintain financial records and that you don't trade while well insolvent, making sure you act with care and diligence in executing your role as a director. So making sure that you actually read the papers that you receive and that you apply your experience and knowledge to decisions that you make. These obligations or duties as directors are consistent across any organization that has a board. Probably the aspect that I like to harp on a little bit more is how you manage conflict of interest because it's one that uh, my experience in working with boards and not-for-profit and, and setting up boards for not-for-profit is that when people start looking at conflict of interest they can get quite nervous about it. Now let me talk you through an example with this. When you set up a board for a not-for-profit quite often you might get people with skills in that you want to help your not-for-profit because they're acting as a director for free and there might be some skills that will benefit your not-for-profit that if you don't have to pay for, well, that's great. So things quite often like an accountant, a lawyer, maybe someone who looks after HR or safety, fundraising, those type of skills are really useful for your organization that if a director has them, well, that's great. You don't necessarily have to pay for them. What then happens then is, okay, so you set up your board and then maybe you've got someone who looks after IT and you have an IT problem in your organization and you're gonna get a director to help. 
it's such a, a, I suppose, a piece of work that the director or you feel that you want to pay that director for the work they're going to do. Now, all of a sudden, people say, oh, well, there's a conflict of interest here. Well, maybe, maybe we shouldn't have that director doing work in the organization because they're director, or maybe they can't be a director if they want to do work in the organization. You've sort of gone a step too far. Really what's happened is, well, what you need to do, first of all, is recognize there's a conflict of interest. So what that conflict of interest is, if you get a director to do work in the organization, if the board is then needing to make a decision about one, engaging that director, or two, the work that's performed, that director can't be involved in the decisions the board is making about that work. That's all. So by disclosing there's a conflict of interest, that's the main thing you need to do so that everyone's aware of it, because then it can be managed. What does managing a conflict of interest mean? That means that if there's a decision that comes up that it involves the work or that director's conflicts of interest, that that director steps out of the conversation. So the best way to do that is they leave the room. They leave the meeting while that piece of that decision is being made and the directors who do not have a conflict of interest are the ones that make the decision. That's how you manage a conflict of interest because as a not-for-profit, you want people on your board who want to contribute to your not-for-profit. So you're always going to have conflicts of interest. What you just need to do is be aware of them and manage them and everything is fine. That's the good governance guide and in a nutshell. Now that you can access this on the ACNC site and you can go through it in your own time. Again, having someone to work through that with you and understand how you want to put that together for your organization is important. And the way you do that uh, can often be with a company secretary or someone with governance experience. And when it's actually operating, really the three cornerstones I think of good governance really are one, a chair who's invested in good governance. So the person who's chairing your board is driving that good governance. Having a company secretary can really help because they're the ones who are helping make sure the framework's up to date and things are maintained and that things aren't missed. And then finally, having a document that contains a lot of these processes and procedures so that if anyone's in doubt or when you're looking to bring on a new director, they can go to and refer to this document, the governance manual, so that everyone's consistent and everyone's clear on how it works and it can, can be handed down to, as the organization continues to evolve. So that's really a snapshot of good governance and, and what it involves uh, at a not-for-profit. How that fits in then obviously with the ACNC requiring you to maintain that level of good governance to maintain your status as a charity or not-for-profit. And then obviously that fits into the planning stage which we've talked about previously in terms of how you want your charity to operate and what that purpose is. So therefore that all ties together with the governance as well. If you do need any help, definitely feel free to reach out. If you've got any questions about all this, because there are a lot of things and a lot of permutations that go along the way, feel free to chuck a comment down below. Happy to get back to you. Because quite often there'll be questions others might have as well. So happy to share that with the community at large. If you are interested in more videos around the not-for-profit and how you set that up, obviously we're doing our series of four, but we do have a number of other videos on our YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe get updates as they come along, but also check out the channel and check out other videos that might be helpful in your journey in setting up your not-for-profit. But otherwise, thank you for your time today, and it's Justin Hogg from RightSource.